Today, I'm going for a first run in the Enda Lapitent. Fifteen point four two miles, eight minutes, twenty eight seconds per mile, one hundred and forty nine beats per minute on average today. Going for a first run in the Rainbow Runner from Enda. Now, before I give you my thoughts on this shoe, I do want to go over some disclosures. This is a pair of shoes that I purchased with my own money. No one sent it to me or is paying me to make this video. And no one's going to get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So, with the disclosures out of the way, let's talk about the Enda Lapitet, this rainbow version, which they're calling the Rainbow Runner. Now, what we have here is a 30 millimeters of stack height in the heel and a six millimeter drop, giving you 24 millimeters of EVA in the midsole. It comes in at 9.5 2 ounces for an 8.5. I have a size 9 US men, so mine's going to come in a little bit higher than that. So probably somewhere in the mid to high 9 ounce range for this daily trainer. Now, this is the first Enda shoe that I've ever tested out before, and I definitely really wanted to love this shoe. I mean, there's just so much about what's going on with this shoe that I think is important that I wanted to love it. First, Enda is a climate neutral company. They're aiming to make some of the most sustainable shoes in the world. The shoes themselves are made in Kenya, which I think is also fantastic. They're a B Corp, which is kind of, if you don't know what a B Corp is, it's not a not-for-profit, it's not a complete for profit, like a regular corporation. It's somewhere in the middle. It's a corporate structure that also has the idea of giving back as part of like the way that the company is structured. And this company also definitely gives a lot back to its local community. So I think that's fantastic. And this particular shoe is a limited edition release of the Enda Lapitet, which was released during their Black Friday sale. Now what they did was instead of cutting their prices in order to discount their product and move more units, they instead raised raised the price by $20 on this Enda Lapitet and made this special edition with that extra $20 going directly to the National Gay and Lesbian Human Rights Commission of Kenya. I thought all that was fantastic and I really wanted to get behind the shoe. And I do love all those things about this company and about this shoe in particular but I did not have a fantastic time on my first run with this shoe. And I think a part of it is, I think a lot of it has to do with the upper, which usually isn't a huge problem for me in a lot of shoes. I think maybe some of it has to do with the midsole in terms of the ride. So let's start and talk about kind of like the upper. Uh, it's an unusual upper. I'll kind of compare like what I was thinking going into it based on what words they're using to describe their shoe, kind of like what I kind of experienced instead. So first they, they mentioned that the shoe has like a sock like upper. Now when I think of sock like upper I'm thinking of fly knit from Nike or prime knit from Adidas like those types of super stretchy booty like construction type of materials. That's not what you're getting with the endolapitet. With the endolapitet you're getting more of like you know it's almost like kind of like a canvas or like a woven cotton type of material that's in here. I'm excited to see what it feels like once it breaks in but I kind of first getting my foot into the shoe definitely was a bit uncomfortable and the materials that are in the eyelets here make it so that the laces don't really move around as you put your foot in so there's a lot of fidgeting that I had to do initially just to even get my foot into the shoe because it was initially laced super tight so I did like really try and get my foot in there and even once I did I felt like it was a really snug fit now they're saying that their shoes are true to size I'm not sure I would say that. I would say that it probably you would need to size up a half size. Uh, at least that's gonna be like, if I were to buy this shoe again, I'd probably go up to a nine and a half for me. Now they're saying that their shoes are slightly longer than normal. And I do find that true because even in this size nine, which I would 
wish I kind of had a nine and a half. In my size nine, I do find that there's plenty of room up in the toe box, so like beyond my toes. So there's, it's a plenty long shoe, but it's just not as wide as I hoped it would be. And it definitely is a low volume shoe, which they are very clear that they're describing it as low volume. They're kind of even saying that you should be wearing like a thinner sock. And on this particular day, it was pretty cold out. So I did have a very thick socks on. So that definitely kind of added to some of my discomfort it getting into this shoe but even with some thinner socks that I put on afterwards just trying on the shoe it's still a really snug fit and I don't think that it's a very wide shoe at all so if you are someone that sometimes has to size up you definitely are going to want to size up for this one but similar to what I've seen from like a lot of adidas sizing this year where the the toe boxes are really narrow and the shoes are really long that's kind of like the sense that I'm getting in the Endel Appetit here. Although this takes it to like just a little bit further where it's a little bit longer and a little bit narrower, at least across the toe box for me. The other th words that they're using to describe this is that it's amply cushioned and I don't think, I mean, 24 millimeters of stack height in the forefoot is a lot of uh, stack height, but I don't really consider this to be an amply cushioned shoe. I do feel like there is ample cushion kind of up here in the heel collar, a very puffy tongue, almost reminiscent of like an ASIC style tongue where there's just a lot of material up top here and like the tongue kind of like starts to stick out real far as you're wearing the shoe. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of that. I've mentioned in a lot of other reviews that I just don't like puffy tongues. And there's a little bit of extra padding or here around the, the heel collar, which is going to be adding a little bit of comfort, but for people that are looking for a lot of cushion up in the areas that are touching around like that ankle bone. I think that this is gonna be nice and comfortable for you for those daily training miles. Now, the, the, the last thing that I'll talk about is that they're, they say that this shoe is built a midfoot foot strike. Uh, and that's in contrast to say like a heel strike. So they're encouraging people to get more towards the middle, towards the front of this shoe. And I've always thought of myself as more of a midfoot striker, maybe more towards the forefoot, depending on the pace. And for today, uh, I did have 15 miles total, but I did a half marathon worth of work at a moderate pace. So nothing up to marathon pace even. So I'll, a lot pulled back from that, but more than just my easy pace. And I did have my warm up and cool down at my easy paces. So I had a little bit of a variety of paces to run in, in the shoe. And I, I found that like, I wasn't feeling the shoe. There was something about it that was disagreeing with me. Now these black portions here at the heel and up at the toe box are a little bit denser of a material. And so you've got denser material and then the softer EVA and then denser material again, which is supposed to encourage, like if you are hitting back here, a quicker transition into this softer area and then a, a firm uh, area right here to toe off from. But what I typically found is, at least with the way that my foot strikes is, I tend to kind of like roll my foot in quite a bit. Um, and instead of it rolling smoothly, I just felt like this toe box, at least across the shoe here, wasn't very flexible for me. So it was kind of just like slapping down a lot of times instead of like slowly or smoothly kind of curling in. I was I felt like I was slapping my foot down a lot on both of my feet. And so after six or seven miles or so, I definitely started to feel discomfort under my left foot first. And then I started feeling it a lot more in my right foot later on in the run. And towards the end, like both my feet were really hurting quite a bit in the pads of my feet. And so I was quite a bit uncomfortable there. And uh, I, at that point, I started thinking like, I've got to figure out a different way to run in the shoe if I just want to make it home. Otherwise, I don't know if I can continue running like in the way that I would kind of like normally just want to run in the shoe. So to the extent that it's trying to train you to run like a Kenyan, it's certainly training me to do something different than I want to do. I'm not saying that I was running like a Kenyan before or that this shoe would make me run like a Kenyan, but it certainly was trying to encourage me to run in a certain way. And what that felt like to me was that it wanted me to run like in the heel. I felt like I was almost like tr I was trying to land on the heel so that way I'd have a smoother transition so that way I just wouldn't have so much impact up in the forefoot up here. So that was something that was, you know, there were times where I didn't notice it, it would like go away, it would come and go in spurts. But then there was times that it would just come roaring back and it was just really just unignorable there. And uh, at that point I was just trying to figure out a different way to be able to kind of get along with the shoe. It was really assertive in terms of like it wanting to me to run in a certain way. So I think that it disagrees with me quite a bit. I'm wondering if 
the upper being a bit firm and snug for me uh, is kind of exacerbating a little bit of that. So I'll give it a couple more tries to see if this upper loosens up a little bit and when it does, if that helps me get along better with the shoe. But for now, it's I love the idea of the shoe. I love what the shoe represents, but it's not my favorite daily trainer. But I will test it a couple more times, maybe on some shorter runs, uh, maybe a 15 mile run out of the box wasn't the best idea for this shoe, but we'll, we'll keep seeing how it does uh, on some subsequent runs. So those are my thoughts on the Enda Lapitet, the Rainbow Runner version after just the first run. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions about this shoe or better yet, feel free to stop by the live stream that I do just about every day here on YouTube, 3 p.m. Central Time. You can always ask me any questions there, or I'd love it if any of you guys who have run in this shoe, have experience with it, could tell me a little bit about that break-in period to see what it was like for you guys. I'd love to hear from you guys there. That's all I have from today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs, and I'll see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?